Though I know I should be wary, still I venture someplace scary. Ghostly haunting, I turn loose. Beetlejuice! 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 It's showtime! But who is Beetlejuice? And what exactly is his backstory? Let's have a chat about it. Hey guys, this is the Fangirl, and I'm McGann, your hostess with the mostess. And if you have somehow managed to never hear of Beetlejuice, um, it is time to correct that problem. Now, quick trigger warning, this is a movie about the afterlife, and there is a lot of talk about death and suicide. If you feel like you need to talk to someone, please reach out to the crisis text line at 741-741. Okay, going back to Beetlejuice, long story short, the 1988 movie is about a married couple, Adam and Barbara, who die in a car accident and then haunt their own house, but they can't leave the premises of their house or else they end up on Saturn with sandworms. Then the Dietz family, which is composed of a rich jerk who had a nervous breakdown, his drama queen artist wife who wears a sweater for pants, yes queen, and the family's pet goth Lydia. They move into the house and make Barbara and Adam nuts, so they try to scare the family away. However, no one can see ghosts, so the couple have to consider outsourcing the job to the bio-exorcist Beetlejuice. But Beetlejuice has his own muddled up agenda about marrying Lydia so that he can, for unexplained reasons, come back, whatever that means. It doesn't really matter though, because Barbara rides a sandworm through the living room and it eats Beetlejuice. So that's that for some reason. This movie is so wild. If you have not seen it, get on that now. And I will grant you a lot of this is just a fun go with it movie that was not really designed to be thought about too deeply, but <laughs> those sweet summer children never predicted that the internet would come along to overanalyze their scripts. <laughs> Evil thunder noises. So who is Beetlejuice and how did he die? Well, the movie only has two characters that talk about Beetlejuice's backstory, himself and Juno the afterlife caseworker. Juno explains that Beetlejuice used to be her assistant, but then he went rogue and started working for himself to do bio-exorcisms, which is where you get rid of the living, either by death or just poltergeist scaring them away. Now, the thing about afterlife caseworkers is that they are supposedly people who committed suicide in real life. That's it's just something that Otho, a living former paranormal expert, randomly blurts out as a rumor he's heard, so that is somewhat unconfirmed. However, from the civil servants we do see in the movie, one has a cut throat and the other has scars across her wrist where she says if she knew then what she knows now, she wouldn't have had her little accident. So it seems that Otho, for no explicable reason, was correct with that bit of exposition dump. And what that tells us almost for certain is that if Beetlejuice was Juno's assistant, that means that he had to have killed himself. The movie doesn't explain what happened, but allegedly there was supposed to be something that said Beetlejuice died of asphyxiation after unsuccessfully trying to hang himself. I'm seeing that referenced all over the internet, but I'm not finding any sources cited as to why that backstory was deleted or if it was ever even real at all. So I'm going to say what I normally would in this occasion, if it doesn't fit what we have in the final product of the movie, then it doesn't matter. Anything chopped out of the film isn't canon because it was removed for a reason. And frankly, from looking at Juno, the receptionist, and every other dead person that we see in the waiting room, a person's form after death reflects how they died. With that being the case, we can't ignore all the grungy ick covering Beetlejuice. That's not nothing. As for what that green skin condition is, well, that's a little harder to narrow down. When Beetlejuice explains his qualifications to human hunt, he says he's traveled extensively, attended Juilliard, graduated from Harvard School of Business, survived the Black Plague, and watched The Exorcist 167 times. And at first, I thought the Black Plague reference was definitely our timestamp for his life, especially since later in the film, Beetlejuice references not having had relations with a girl in 
600 years. Now, the Black Plague isn't actually a thing. If you try to Google it, it comes up as the Bubonic Plague or the Black Death, but the Black Death occurred in the 1300s, so talking about something 600 years ago seems to reaffirm that Betelgeuse did live through that era. However, I kind of think that he was just messing around and saying whatever random thing came to mind. I mean, the Bubonic Plague went through Europe and not one thing about Betelgeuse suggests that he's European or from the 14th century. He seems like a very modern dude who even makes references to things like Kmart. Not to mention, Betelgeuse was only working as a lowly assistant. I mean, come on, someone who has been working as a civil servant for 600 years would surely be at least a few rungs higher on the ladder. It's also curious that Betelgeuse just up and quits his job to work freelance. Like, who is enforcing the rules in death? And why do they matter if you have free will and can walk away at any time? But that's something to investigate another day. The logic still stands, though, that Betelgeuse does not look like he lived in the 1300s or that he died from a hanging. And between the gnarly skin and the blackened eyes, I think Betelgeuse might have been poisoned. While I was researching how poisons impact a person, I came across this photo of a man who had dioxin, a highly toxic substance often found in herbicide, put into his soup. His body's reaction to that looks as if it was rotting the skin from a distance, which is eerily similar to what Betelgeuse looks like in his face. In fact, the discoloration around his mouth implies that BJ drank something and started throwing some of it back up later, maybe even in a vain attempt to save his own life. There was also this infamous pesticide called DDT, and that was so toxic for the environment and people that it ended up being banned by the Environmental Protection Agency in 1972. Hmm, here's a movie set in 1988 featuring a ghost that has lots of relevant pop culture references, so he obviously hasn't been dead for too terribly long, which means dying around 1972 would fit pretty well into Beetlejuice's backstory. And looking at Beetlejuice's personality and temperament, it's like he wants to be seen as smart and desirable and a person that you want to associate with, yet he doesn't doesn't really have the perseverance to drive his own success forward. He wants to take shortcuts and he wants to cheat people. Beetlejuice is petty and a slick talker, but he really has nothing to back up his claims. And he is definitely not well respected amongst the dead as he has to sift through a newspaper and look for people that he deems suckers so that he can con them. So I don't see Beetlejuice as being some lord or respectable CEO or or even a store manager while he was alive. He's just too unreliable and unpredictable. So piecing together his personality profile, I think it's plausible that Beetlejuice used to do something like be a factory worker who helped manufacture chemicals like DDT or dioxins. Not like a chemist, but more like someone on the assembly line that had access to the ingredients. And one day he made an error, or he got upset, and he took a big swig from a dangerous bottle that ended his life. Something else that I find interesting and perhaps very telling for who Beetlejuice was is his name. All the movie merchandise spells it more phonetically, like the words beetle and juice. However, in the movie, on his flyers, commercials, his grave marker, it's spelled B-E-T-E-L-G-E-U-S-E, -E -E, as in Beetlejuice, the 10th brightest star in the sky. And I'm guessing that that's a nickname, which would mean Beetlejuice liked astronomy. Maybe Earth and other humans made him feel like such an outcast that he dreamed of of something better out in the universe. And hey, we know that sandworms are from Saturn, so in a way, Betelgeuse eventually got his wish and traveled to space. The spelling of his name is such an interesting, unexplained touch in the movie that gives us a hidden layer to the character. I wish there was more backstory for it, 
it. But that's about as far as I can pick apart Beetlejuice's life and death. So what do you guys think? Am I in the right ballpark or way off base? Just do not start quoting things from the musical at me, okay? Because they've changed enough in the play to make that an alternate universe, so it's its own self-contained world. It might not be reality, but theories can be dark and mentally impact you, so don't forget text 741741 if you need to talk to someone. Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page, and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family member.